I cut my fingernails today. <laughs> Never a good, never a good beer popping day when you cut those fingernails to the first day. It's you always want to do something with your fingernails the minute after you cut them all off. <laughs> like I didn't need these before, but now I need to get this paper clip up and it's sore. <laughs> no, can't stop once I start. It stings. Got this zit that was worth popping, but anyway. Now you're all nub in there trying to pop that thing. It's just not going to work Pick out. Pick a paper clip up. <laughs> Pick a paper. Oh, so right. we're talking Benny Snell today. Benny Snell is going to kick off our running back uh, first look, uh, first review kind of edition here. Benny Snell, a.k.a. Snell, yeah. A.k.a. You smell me, girl. I smell <laughs> like money. What's better? A.k.a. <laughs> ah? A.k.a. Come on. Soundboard's really letting you down. <laughs> I whiffed like some bad pass protection, which not a problem for Benny Snell. Definitely not. We'll get to that in a little bit. Jumped a little head. Did you hit? The, <laughs> did you go? AKA Snell the roses. I don't. Uh, I, don't so, know. I was gonna save that one for later. You know, like sometimes you just gotta Snell the roses, but right, you can't give it all of to him at once. Yeah, I mean the Snell you late. Uh, you you Snell me, girl. I, I smell, smell like, like money. money. <laughs> I was, I've been saving that one. I've been, I've been saving. That you one. sprung that on us. <laughs> All right, so what's good about Benny Snell? Let's let's get into. All right, well let's. We're planting flags here. We we got into some Benny Snell here. I did did a little research on what this. I like to do research on on the, on the offense when I get into a, a player and just see, see what they're doing and how they're doing it and <laughs> what kind of offense they run and the system and coordinators, head coaches, all that kind of stuff. So this is an air raid offense, right? Well, so it's interesting. <laughs> so Mark Stoops took over in thirteen, two thousand thirteen. Um, Basically, don't tell the Wildcats that stats indicate that running the ball is dumb. Mm. When Mark Stoops took over in 2013, um, the Wildcats went so far to print up T-shirts that said Air Raid Wildcats 2013 because that's what the Stoops do. It's an Air Raid offense bringing the Air Raid back to Kentucky. This is, you know. This is what we were going to do. I don't do. know if they ever had it, had it, <laughs> but they were excited to maybe. I think they may have at some point. Um so, oh, don't tell Jared Lorenzen they didn't used to have an air raid on this. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so they went so far to have shirts made up as the air raid 2013. Well, because that's what they were going to do, because obviously you have to pass. That's the only way. Uh, so they started doing that. Didn't really work out. Ended up changing coordinators, uh, replacing Shannon Dawson with Eddie Gran or Grain. Not really sure on how to pronounce that, uh, but he's got some time at Auburn and he's Worked with a bunch of really good uh, running backs. Produced some strong run games over there, as Auburn likes to do. The likes of Cadillac Williams, Brandon Jacobs, Kenny Iron, uh, Ronnie Brown, Rudy Johnson. Then at Tennessee with Montario Hardesty at Old Miss with Deuce McAllister. So a nice background with some good kind of workhorsey big running backs who did good things in the college. And then some of them went on to do great things in the pros. Um, and to be fair... They never really had a super great quarterback to run the air raid with, but a lot of teams don't have great quarterbacks, and they just keep going with throwing the shit out of the football. Right. Well, throwing the ball in the SEC is a lot easier right. said than done. Ask Missouri. They had a good quarterback. You can think and you're going to throw out, it right? all over the place, but everybody on defense is fast. Right. So in 2016, they completely revamped the offense with freshman Benny Snell, a.k.a. <laughs> <laughs> emerging as a hoss here. Uh, they had another running back, Boom Williams, over there. I, th I believe both of them had 1,000-yard seasons. Uh, fast forward to right now, Kentucky has had their best couples of seasons, ending 12th in the AP poll, the highest since 1949, mostly on the back of Snell. You give some decent amount of credit to the O-line, as Benny Snell loves to do. He's all, all Team player. Gives a bunch of praise, all glory to the offensive line. Love, love hearing that. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick background of went from air raid to running the ball in an era where, you know, a lot of people will tell you, well, statistically, <laughs> it's dumb to run the ball. You should just be pass first and pass happy and you got to pass, pass, pass. Well, Kentucky's been not doing anything right since 1949. Put it on the back of Snell and they finished 12th and a nice win over uh, Penn State in the what, what, what bowl was that? The. I don't even know. RV. <laughs> the camping, camping bowl. day yeah. bowl. Be, bring your own firewood bowl. Right. So, and well done by Kentucky for realizing that and Mark Stoops by realizing that and coming on and, and, and making the switch and, and 
you know, getting away from what he was doing. And, and which brings us to our guy, Benny Snell. We'll get into a, a little bit of what happened while he was at Kentucky. Um, he was three 3,000 yard seasons, uh, which he only played three seasons. He'll be, he's 20, he'll be 21 in February. Mm. Uh, he had 13, 16, 19 total touchdowns. Uh, average over five years of carry yards every of year. Carry. Five, sorry, five yards of carry every year he was there. Uh, just a complete workhorse. This is the cog in the offense for the Wildcats, and they were in the SEC. So he's playing good talent every single time that they're touching the field. Right. They're playing a pretty good team where most teams on their schedule are circling this SEC matchup because we're going down there. We're going to play these SEC guys, and this is you know we want to get up for this one. Right. And, you know, not every team in the SEC is awesome. Some of them are mediocre, as other mediocre teams are. But there's a lot better, higher athletic competition in the SEC. Absolutely. And, and just like you were saying, like the Kentucky success that they've seen this year, going into that Georgia game, they were seven and one as a team. Uh, maybe they were eighth or ninth or tenth in the nation or something yeah. like that. Heading into Georgia. They were seven and one, but six and one in the SEC. They've they had only played one out of conference game, so it wasn't like they had three or four pancakes and then got into the SEC schedule. The SEC schedule was front loaded right. on their schedule, and they were six and one. Obviously, they were outmatched against Georgia. We've seen Georgia the last two years match up well against Bama, and you know beat the socks off of Bama, except for the, at the last second when the game was over and they weren't winning anymore. You know, but so Kentucky got beat up by Georgia, but that was a huge matchup, and Kentucky hadn't had a game like that in forever right you know whereas national game and everybody was paying attention to him it was Kentucky, all of a sudden kentucky was on the map and that was benny snell put them on their back to get them there for sure so just some yeah, and i mean they, they 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 definitely did look out, out over match versus georgia but i mean snell pretty much still got his like he still he looked like he belonged on that field right I mean, you mentioned sec talent that he's playing against like it did not look fun to tackle Benny Snell out there, and and that these are good tacklers they're throwing at him. Well, like, they're defensively. Georgia sco- Georgia just scored. I just mean at, everybody. No, I, I know, I know, but I'm saying like when I say Kentucky was outmatched, like Georgia just Georgia had like 24 points in the first couple. Yeah. They they scored every time they got the ball, first four or five possessions. Kentucky just didn't have a chance. But it wasn't Benny Snell's fault for sure. He can't. He's not playing defense. Right. Right. So if you go over the 2000 kind of 18 numbers of what was going on, just to kind of solidify that he was basically the offense um snell had 289 attempts which is fourth in the nation uh terry wilson had 135 attempts and he's the quarterback um and then he was 88th in in pass attempts which is you know pretty low on the totem pole pretty far back there right um and then lynn bowden jr who is a receiver for them who's interesting prospect he's fun to watch out there you see him making plays out there while you're watching the Snell highlights. He had 67 receptions, 745 yards, and five touchdowns. He's their best player on offense outside of Benny Snell. So just kind of tell you what the rest of the offense is doing. It's not much. It's right. on It's on the back of Benny Snell. Right, which makes it even more impressive because everyone in the whole stadium knows that this dude's getting the ball Right, and they can't stop him. To yeah. have double-digit touchdowns every year and average over five yards of carry every year in the SEC on a predominantly not great program right. is, is impressive. Right. Yeah, yeah, and even it, it, that to further on that offense, like you said, the Terry Wilson, they, they're throwing it for only 160 yards a game. Right. So, like, everybody knows their <clears throat> their offense is running through Benny Snell they're, and still getting 200 rushing yards a game for the, the teams running for 200 yards a game and only throwing it for 160. It's not a surprise. And, and, and if you look at – Terry, the quarterback's rushing averages. He's he's not out there tearing it up. It's right. not like he was, um, you know, one of those just really killer running. He, his he average, only averaged like four yards to carry. So it's not like it was right. him stretching the defense and making it easier on Benny. If anything, it would have been nice for him to be a little better passer and make it easier on Benny. Sure, yeah. and and you see Benny blocking a ton when 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 they call those design quarterback runs. Um, but we were talking about defenses keying in on Benny Snell. There's one game that comes to mind in 17 against Ole Miss. He touched the ball like seven straight times on the final drive of that of that game. Yeah. They were down by four. He he d- gets them all the way down the field. On Kentucky's 80, final drive. Right. He, he, I believe he had 83 yards. On that on, one on drive. Him, on the one drive. Both out of the Wildcat and just right. straight handoff. Took them all the way down the field. And they scored and they were up. I think they lost that game, but he put them up by three on their final drive of the game. It was just it was so impressive because you're watching it, and, and when you're watching the individual game and it's cut up, you know, you kind of have to pause it to get your bearings on time and, 
and down, down in distance. Down in distance and formation. And, and <clears throat> you know, a lot of these games, different players that we're watching, like, it's not like, okay, you see first down, and then you see second down, and then you see third down. That's what you see with Benny Snell. You see, like, every down because he's – Running right. the ball on every yeah, down. Yeah, you see the progression through the downs because he is right. the offense. Right. Those games take a lot longer to watch because Benny <laughs> Snell is just right. doing work. And he's got a decent amount of tape out there for anybody interested in getting all on the tape. Tons um, of it. Decent amount out there for him. So let's just get into the kind of player that he is a little bit. Mm. We know we've we've told you that he's the focal point of the offense. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but let's. So I think the vision's really good. It's great. It's, it's one of one of his best attributes for sure. Like basically, I think the the kind of the real big attributes for this guy that you want out of your running back that make him a pretty much a complete package are all there with maybe the exception of being s- the speed and the quote unquote explosion. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We'll give it its own little segment. But I think the vision's great. I think the power's great. I think the balance is is outstanding. And I think there's really good patience uh, all throughout his tape. Yeah, I mean. Th- don't don't let patience be confused with hesitation because there's zero hesitation or wasted movement. He gets what's blocked and then plenty more. And everything seems tight and compact. There's just not there's no wasted movement. It's decisive. He takes great angles. If you don't take the right, right. angle, forget about it. Because if he gets any to- type of leverage on you, he's gonna get past you. And he doesn't even need leverage because he can stiff arm you or run through you. Right. So. While he may not be the most athletic guy or the, the most the fastest and the most explosive guy and which is people want to knock him for, I do believe there's plenty of examples of him being super athletic uh, yeah, he'll hurt, out there he'll on the field you. of being a very one of the better athletes on the field. While it may not equate to the the highest level of explosion or maybe game breaking speed, it that, does equate to ma- yeah, a, a bunch of other really good things uh, like you. I love his feet, uh, the way he uses different strides. Um to, to set all sorts of different things up. He keeps defenders off of him. He's got all these little shoulder dips of just showing how athletic that he is. Like, he's a big guy. He he could easily be just kind of stiff and upright, and there's a lot of times where guys are coming after him and trying to lay hands on him, and he's kind of just dipping his shoulder underneath a defender, kind of running out with him with arms out, and then he basically whiffs on him. Um, I like the fact that he uses different speeds angles and strides to set up blocks behind the line of scrimmage. And I think sometimes that gets confused with being um, hesitant hesitant or or slow slow to the the hole. hole. Um, (laughs) But that's that. I think that's why he's so successful is because behind that line, he's like some of those wildcat plays. He'll call hike and he'll stand there for like two seconds and let let things just happen. And then figure out where he's going. And I don't know if I ever saw him throw the ball out of the wildcat. I don't like, think so. I can't recall any time where he threw it. So, like, you knew he's running the ball. Yeah. And, like, they still couldn't stop it, whether it was out of the Wildcat or not. Um, I mean, the pad level is great. Right. And, I mean, the vision is there. So, if there's a hole, he's going to hit it. But if it, there's no hole, he just makes a hole. Right. And for, like, a three-yard so hole. He's, hey, where, he has a three-yard hole built into that frame. That's where the power kind of comes in. And he, he, he uses good pad level. He's always going to... If there's nothing there, like you said, he's always going to pick up that that little bit of yardage. He's always falling forward. The sound of those pads hitting is just violent. Rarely gets tackled for losses, mm-hmm. even though he's so slow behind the line. Right. <laughs> um, I, I I think he's he's a really really interesting prospect. That there's a the pass protection looks great. Yep. In my opinion, I mean, sure he misses some stuff here or there. Nobody's but, perfect. But for the most part, he's back there standing in there taking on blockers it's not garbage little chips and all this other stuff like he's which he can do that well as well he's taking on contact and like you said when the quarterback is running he's out there lead blocking and 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 laying wood uh so i i think that bodes really well for him of be be already being more advanced than some other guys in pass protection so he doesn't have to come off the field um in really any situations yeah i mean he just he's got everything that you're looking for i mean almost everything the, the the size the short area burst to go with the short area acceleration power agility like what else are you looking for like this guy i have zero concern about this guy's game translating to the right. nfl i i agree i mean just like i got him as the a gritty gutter gritty gutty grinder <laughs> just some alliteration there that's he finishes all of his runs uh even when it's not there like you said he he can smash it for a positive play 
He's going to run through any garbage tackle you're bringing his way. Don't come um, with some Mark-ass, weak-ass shit. At first, I was kind of questioning some of the outside speed and whether he could take that outside, but I, I, I have plenty of examples of success um, during the film review here where he was able to get outside with, with some different angles and different right. leg speed and different feet movement of being able to take those angles and then, you know, if it's not available, here comes the power again. Right. There, plenty of guys get caught on those outside tosses. He, right. he wins a reasonable amount of time, and then even when he doesn't win, he He's wins. Still winning. Right. right. He, you see him. You see him try to get the edge a couple times, and and he knows that he's not gonna beat this defender to the edge so he just cuts up field and he's barreling you over for three to five more yards right like i'll take that any day all day every day sure and i think uh you know you watch some of these other guys who are faster guys and you know maybe they get to the outside a little quicker than he does but um i don't i don't see well, who else you gonna trust to just go get you f four yards every time right against elite competition right week in week out like you said everybody in the stadium knows he's getting it Right. Um, I, I know Daryl Henderson averaged like nine yards a carry, but like I don't trust him to go out on an NFL field and get me to third, a second six third, situation. Third and, or third and one. Right. And convert to third and one. Like I, I, I have no doubts about Benny Snell doing that. So then I guess the next thing would be the unproven hands. Right. So he's knocked coming in in 18. That was kind of his knock. He, they're, they're not sure of his receiving ability. Not a ton of opportunity for him in this in this offense to catch balls. I think he only had 29 receptions over the course of his career. So there wasn't a ton of opportunity. It's kind of hard to find targets for right. college players. Um, but, I mean, when you see him get thrown the ball, he, he makes the most of it. Right. Away from the body, hands catches Handsy catching. for the most part. I, I've... I've in the in the tape that I've seen, there's there's one where he runs a wheel and it's slightly overthrown and he still almost catches it. And then there's yep. one complete drop that I saw out of all the film that I watched. I think maybe I can peg one bad concentration drop on him. And the rest of him, when he does get balls thrown his way, which I think it was 30 for the career, 29 for the career, something like that. I said 29. I'll double check that. 29. Not Not a ton, but when he was getting his... He was making the most of it. Uh, is he a mismatch? Is he Alvin Kamara getting on a linebacker out there? No, certainly not. But I don't need a guy like Benny Snell to be the mismatch out there because I he's the guy who gets the 20 carries. And then if he can just get three or four checkdowns during the game right. and know that he's not a wash when the ball comes his way and he's catching air, right? Like I'm, I'm fine with that. And I've, I've seen the hands be worked out just fine in these situations. I mean, the next back on the team had eight catches, so it's not like there was some other back coming in there right. and they were dumping it down like crazy to some other running back. They just didn't throw it to the running back. Yeah, right. well, and two of those was freshmen, so 27 catches in the last two years. So that average per year is deceiving. Not terrible. Yeah, deceiving. You mentioned the 20 carries. Like He's definitely capable of the 20 carries, and he gets stronger right. as those 20 carries go along. Like He gets better as the game goes along i just wanted to bring that up you mentioned these 20 carries like he's he's yeah. ready to be a workhorse for sure um but but i mean back to the receiving like i think he runs pretty decent routes out of the backfield like he gets open yeah uh that they, they could have thrown it to him more i think he's succeeded plenty when he got thrown the ball so i mean typical saying we have here at married to the game like he has hands right he physically he has two hands and it's not like there are some examples of him out there catching the ball with his hands and he's not just a body catcher or just this big slow back out of the backfield who's just you know catches it half the time you throw it to him i don't think he's a liability out there and then again you put the pat the the pass uh, protection the pass pro on top of that i mean i don't there's there's not a he whole lot of reason to take him off the field unless you have Tariq cohen in your backfield and that's who you'd rather have in there on third down for whatever reason right um and then so on the next part of the knock we'll, we'll end and this kind of segment with the breaking doesn't have the game breaking speed or explosiveness. So right. that that's probably the biggest problem with anybody with Benny Snell is how he's, he's slow and just this, you know, big typical grinder. Just no, he's just, nobody wants anything to do with him because that's all he is. Right. And, People pegged uh, James Connor as only a goal line back coming right. out of college. Like, Get out of here. He forced the most missed tackles at one point during this, like, way into the season. James Conner had, like, the most forced missed tackles, like, more than Le'Veon Bell had. Which, yeah. speaking of forced tackles, it's hard to find those stats, again, with these college players. But reading through different things, 
Um, Benny Snell in 2017 forced 44 missed tackles on running plays, which led the SEC. So he he's a self self proclaimed best SEC and the be- best back in the SEC. Right, and w- David Montgomery broke the record for right. um, playing in a different conference for, for playing in a different conference. But broke Dalvin Cook's record. We'll we'll get to him later. But but so the, I mean that's still a good number. Forty four is is a good number. number. Led I mean, the he SEC. Led the SEC in tackles. So yeah, I mean, is he slow? No, he's not slow. He's he has some speed and he can eat up chunk yardage. But that will be the knock is that. He's not a threat to house it from anywhere on the field like you would like yeah. maybe a Daryl Henderson might be, even though I might question his super long speed, but the I mean, he's so fast. That's that's if but if Benny like you said off air, if Benny Snell had that long right. speed, he would be unquestionably it's, the best back in the Exactly. This class. That's what I was gonna say. Like if 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 he had the 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 ability that when he touched it and you everybody on the field believed that he could go 80 yards every time he touched the ball he'd be the best running back in this class like he'd, yeah, he'd, he'd be out he has all the other traits and the 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 lack of speed and explosiveness is what you're going to knock him for but if if and i i'll get it to it in a second but like i do believe that if it was there i mean you could say that about a lot of guys if right. they had this one trait but like he's got everything else he's really good at everything and he's still good but if he had that just little bit more top end speed and a little bit more like wow explosiveness he would be the and it doesn't wouldn't take much i think he would be the best considered the best back in this class or right up there with it instead of being out of the top 10 for you know most people in this class for running backs agreed but we're we're prepared for that we're prepared we know that right. that's right we know he's not going to the to the uh combine and running a four four forty. like that's not what he's going to do and we know that he's not going to go in there and have the fastest three cone drill that's ever happened. Right. But I'll go back to the thing that you guys hit on first and and probably like the best out of it is there's a reason he leads the SEC in forced t- missed tackles and there's a reason why that his patience pays off and it all comes back down to his vision. Like every time you talk about a good running back, most of the time people are going to start talking about vision early and often yeah. when you're talking about successful running backs. Right. And I like I'll go back to. I spent a lot of time talking about Dalvin Cook two years ago after the combine when people were hating on his three cone drill. All of a sudden, nobody knew how he got a first down and first down in college football. But you had that sports science show with John Brinkus and Dalvin Cook's eye, his hand eye coordination, his eye reaction, his seeing what was happening in front of him was faster than anybody they've ever tracked. Right. And if Benny Snell's seeing stuff faster, and he doesn't, maybe he's not the fastest guy on the field. But if he sees it a hair before anybody else, right, and he can react to it a hair before anybody else, he's already moving forward when and, everybody else is moving side to side. And if the balance and the feet and all and and the vision and and all these things and the power is all there, like he even if he doesn't even quite see it, maybe he's seeing it around the same time you are, but he's getting to that hole. And you told me a couple of weeks ago more about his feet and the way he some foot some footwork and right. the way he would set up stuff he just, more than you just now did on the mics here a couple of weeks yeah. ago you were talking about benny snell's running and the it's way just he, the way he uses his strides and he'll shorten strides. he'll shorten things up and kind of pitter patter in the backfield and then you know there it is get get to the hole which is kind of what i was you know when people want to talk about the lack of explosiveness well if you know if you're not really paying attention and you don't like benny snell then it's easy to just say exactly. yeah there's no explosion there like look at this big guy he's just a big slow idiot and he's just his power back but i i would i would disagree some i mean i can understand you know that there that there isn't a super obvious explosion point um, but I think when he sees the lane and he goes for it, he shows a good enough increase in urgency. We'll call it urgency here. There you go. Um, rather than uh, explosion. Uh, I think he's he's his zero to 20 yard window is great. And I do think that if he gets going, there's plenty of clips of him running away from people yeah. like that. I haven't watched any of these guys who are just like outside of uh, Daryl Henderson. And I've only watched five or six guys. But I haven't seen anybody who's just like, electrically fast where it's like oh my god look at how fast these guys and half the time daryl henderson's doing it or darrell henderson's doing it there's nobody even a ray ran through this cavernous hole and he was out playing against conference usa players like this is a guy playing in the sec and sometimes when he's in a straight line and ready to roll no you know benny snell's running away from guys right 
And, and if he's not running away from you, I mean, you still have to try and tackle him. Right. You still have to well, avoid that stiff that's, arm. That's what I was getting at when Big Co was talking about, you know, how good's the vision and the Dalvin Cook hand-eye coordination. Like, maybe even if he, maybe on that particular run, maybe his he didn't quite see it and you, you guys are around the same speed getting to that hole. Well, you better not come with some soft, sorry-ass bullshit trying to tackle him because yeah. he's just going to run you over. Like, he's got the power and balance to run through a garbage tackle through that hole. All right. Even if the vision wasn't on point on that particular play play like he's going to run through that now the next time you want to come and he's you're going to be slow to the hole right. <laughs> because it was like oh shit i just got walloped by benny snell yeah he just ran for another like it's not like oh well he gets a little contact in the hole he gets contact in the hole and he runs for another 20 yards every play there's contact right. in his hole he's playing against sec defenses how many times this one of the slowest running backs in the league legarrett blunt how many times when he's actually getting the toast do you see him burst into open lanes he like he we are Legarrette Blunt is always running free, yeah, because he's bust. He bowled somebody over, or right. th- or somebody made a business decision, right, or whatever. Took a bad angle, got bowled uh, over. My shoe wasn't tied, coach. Right, uh, you know. I thought oh, I heard a you whistle. Say my name. I heard a, somebody blew a whistle in the stands. I thought they blew. I thought it was false start. You know, like business decisions happen. And Benny Snell's one of those cats, like Casey said, like the first time. He beats you're in the hole with him. The second time, you might not be quite as fast to the hole yeah. either. So you can you can peg the lack of explosion, and I I get it. I mean I, I can see that. But there's definitely a get up b- between right. him doing his thing in the backfield, using his patience, using the different strides and and stride lengths, and to set things up and go. And when he gets his lane, he gets up and goes. Like and there's there's some go to what. And then again. You got to wrangle this big mofo. I'm like, not. I'm not comparing him pounds. to Legarrette Blunt. I just want right. to use that as a as an example because Legarrette Blunt's a huge man and he's one of the slowest backs in the NFL and he always finds himself running by himself sometimes because right. people don't want to tackle him. You bring in Benny Snell, who's a, a much more professional runner. Like a like his his game is like Jay said, no doubt about it. He's he could suit up and look fine on Sundays right now. Right. There's and like. LeGarrette Blunt didn't play in the SEC in college and, and average over five yards a carry for three straight years. And then the thing that we haven't talked about yet, a separator, even if I said, okay, all you got was that LeGarrette Blunt's athleticism, which, first of all, LeGarrette Blunt's pretty underrated for his athleticism, and I think Benny Snell's a better athlete. But the separator, the attitude, the the right. pretty much the opposite of what LeGarrette Blunt was coming out of college as far as – and I don't need my interviewee – to be Peyton Manning. I don't need him to go above and beyond and answer yeah, two questions. Need, and, and I don't need I him don't, to be robotic. Like so I don't even want you to be robotic. I don't in your need answer. I don't need him to be I don't need you, you to know, be Russell Wilson. I don't need my interviewee to be Dabo Sweeney. I don't need that's a coach. He's the best in the game at it. I don't but every time the microphone got put in Benny Snell's face, you could see his passion for football, his passion for his teammates and his, you know what I mean? Like his passion for life. Right. Like he's passion he's, for Benny Snell. He's a, he's a magnet. Like he, the guys, his team, he loves his team. His team loves him. You know, that and, the, and that Kentucky, I'll tell you this, like Kentucky was kind of on the center stage this year for the first time in forever. But the last three or four years, I mean. Wasn't they, the air raid that got him there. And it wasn't. It was a tough out. They beat up Carolina. Carolina would be rolling and we'd hit Kentucky and they'd slap us. We couldn't tackle Benny Snell. And the, co- the players love to coach. The coach loves it. They got a good little atmosphere going. And Benny Snell's right in the middle of all that. And that that like when I put my fantasy draft pick into somebody, I, I'm getting a guy who I know I'm not. He's not going to let me down. Right. His effort – Hundred <laughs> percent, all day long. Well, let's talk about the fantasy side of this thing a little bit. Um, did you have anything else, Jay Wayne? Oh, I got plenty more. How much, <laughs> how Snell, much? yeah, he does. <laughs> you can Google it; it's worth a Google. Damn, you're oh, really wrong board over there. Really letting us down. On the how much ball. time you got, buddy? That was that was what I meant to do. That's what he meant to do. Um, the well, good instinct one. We'll go to the off the field thing. A couple more things, like, I mean. He's got to be the funnest interview. I mean, this dude is so cool. Like, humble but cocky and, like, yes, right. soft-spoken well, that, but mean and, like... Paul's on the humble but cocky. Like, I don't need my guy to be Russell Wilson, where it's just like, right. uh, I'm so humble and I'm robotic and the right. answers are fucking boring and you know you're not... That's not really how you are. And it's right. just like, I right. don't need that shit. Like, you be humble, but I w- have a personality. Right. Be you. And you he's got a ridiculous right. personality that I think translates to the NFL. I mean, he's just... The smile alone is just electrifying, like... Like, he's got an explosive smile. Forget if he can t- take it to the house. Right. Um, but, I mean, the fact that, you know, he played in the bowl game after declaring for, for the NFL, that that's a, a rarity now. And you get the sense, you get the impression that he's not going to let his teammates down by sitting out a game. Now, 
That being said, he was four yards away from the rushing record for uh, Kentucky, and he did get thrown out of the bowl game the year before right. on a bogus, one of the most ridiculous calls I've ever seen made. Like the I don't know if you saw it, but the announcers were even crucifying these refs, shitting about it, about how bad it was. Um, but I mean, he's just like I want to be friends with Benny Snell. He just seems like the coolest dude in the room. Yeah, like whatever Benny Snell's doing, that's what I want to do. That's yeah. what I think's cool. Like, you tell me what well, you tell me what's cool. Great Benny. stomach tat. <laughs> I don't know got, about that. Got but. Snell, yeah, across the stomach. <laughs> Love that. Sometimes you got to stop and smell the roses, you know. Got it. It's not, and it's not like he's. You know, I don't know if LeGarrette Blunt ever had abs, but this Snell has abs. <laughs> like it's the, he's not like this right. big slobby big I know. He's grinder. Two hundred twenty three like, pounds, this, but that's rock. Right, he's an athletic guy. It's not just because you don't see him go through the hole and explode and be this and be Justice Hill. Well, Justice Hill's one hundred and ninety pounds, soaking right? wet, if that. I mean, he does. Does he have the lateral agility, agility of David Montgomery? No, not necessarily. But I, I do think that there is some underrated explosive explosive nature to Benny Snell's game here or else he wouldn't have been able to do what he did like, exactly there's you can easily say well look at this look at how slow he was on this particular run well if you pay attention and watch them all you'll see some acceleration from where he went through that line to the next level absolutely uh I, I one interesting note here I find it crazy how much when you because I like part of my process is to go read through all the roto world the college football roto world blurbs on these guys because if, if you're a skill position player they'll they'll do blurbs on them every week kind of like in the nfl and so i go and read through all those to kind of get a feel for what you know roto world generally has their pulse on the ground of what the general consensus is and um obviously they give their opinion which we have harped on not not welcoming too much over here but like it's crazy how much they want benny snell to be good even though they know that he's going to do bad at the combine, right? Like it, I, I find it notable that they're rooting for this underdog who couldn't possibly be good in the NFL after a bad combine, right? You know, and like we were talking about it off air, like I could give a fuck what happens at the combine. For, I, don't, I don't even need to for, watch the combine. For, for now, the, now there are plenty for of Benny people, Snow. right? There's plenty of people that it matters for, and yeah, sure, I like to watch the combine. I like to see him run around in their underwear and test and get and height and weight. And there's there's important things that we I don't want to seem like we hate the combine, but like, I don't hate the combine. I don't need the combine to tell me anything about Benny Snell. Right. Sure. I know I mean, everything I need to know. Maybe I could watch him catch passes. Sure. Let me see some more. Let me see the camera directly on you while you get thrown six in a row across the gauntlet. Let right. me see the that. That's a, yep. that'll, be, that'll be fun. But yeah, that's that's not. So like the fantasy side of this thing talking about the combine is you know the combine's either going to elevate benny snell some from where the hate is or it's going to further even sink even more hate into people and currently right now i'm ready for that right i'm i'm all in on snell like i mean i'm not going to draft him as my first overall back but and like i said i'm not through this process with a lot of players i've i'm through it with four where i've watched all the tape multiple times and i've seen two or three other guys a couple of games so i'm not very far into this process but i mean benny snell's got everything i want i love that there's so much hate on this love guy it. the cheap benny snell and, it, and it's because be he's it's because he's not sexy there's nothing yep. sexy about him you Except can watch a smile you can watch a couple of plays and go oh this guy's not explosive and he's slow and he's just a big uh you know grinder and yeah, he is a grinder. He's not big, dumb, and slow though. He's he's cut. He's athletic. He's ready to roll. Like I I hope that he keeps sliding down draft boards. What, one more thing about running an SEC. Kentucky has scared no one for the last two years with their passing game, and yet Benny Snell gets it done with hundred yard games after right. hundred yard games. He's at he averaged one hundred eleven yards a game this year. Averaged one hundred yards a game as a sophomore. Let me tell you what. My Gamecocks, we got Jake Bentley as a, a well above average quarterback. We got Debo Samuel. Depends who's a, who you talk to. Deep, yeah, well, y'all don't y'all don't know if you don't know. J- Debo Samuel's a beast. True. Brian Edwards really really good. Last year we had Hayden Hurst, and we st- we can't run the ball in the SEC. We haven't had a running back in years. Marshawn Lattimore. Well, Mike Davis. <laughs> Mike Davis. We 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 just been struggling. My, Bruce yeah. Ellington. Mike Davis was actually above. Oh, he was average. a wide receiver. Bruce I'm Ellington. Of, Ellington was a brother. Was a, Andre. I'm thinking it was a brother. Andre yeah, Andre was a Clemson. Clemson. That's his yeah. cousin. Andre yeah. went to Clemson. Bruce went to Carolina. Bruce was our starting point guard. He was clutch. Uh, but we we can't run the ball in SEC. Haven't been able to run both. We haven't ran the ball 
literally effectively since Lattimore yeah. got hurt. Well, that's kind of what we based the beginning of this thing off of. Like everyone in the stadium knows that it was going to be that's Snell. It. That's and it, it was Snell. And he still did his damn thing. If you put Snell. Snell yeah. So if he wasn't athletic and there wasn't any explosiveness and he couldn't run away from anybody, he certainly wouldn't have averaged five yards a carry, had a thousand yards every single season. Dude, it's, it's so hard to get and that double first. double touchdown. It's so hard to get that first down. In they the wouldn't SEC. even sniff the end zone if it wasn't for Benny Snell. Bro, if, we, if the Gamecocks could have had Benny Snell on that offense, we'd have been so dangerous might not have been a beat clemson but other than that we've been real good so yeah i'm 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 excited to let the hate pile up on this Me guy too. he's going to be a guy that i'm going to be targeting in, in every single draft because he's not going to be on the top of the board so i'm going to you're going to be able to move around and pick this guy up i think he's a really good player i think he's got all the traits that you want with the quote with the little knock for the speed and and the explosiveness but i'll, I'll take that like right he it, makes up for it in other areas Plus I think some. I think he's a, he's a better Jordan Howard. Like mm. you can hate Jordan Howard if you want to and say he's not any good, but well, he had, nobody was hating Jordan Howard two years ago when they got when he got the ball twenty right. times a or, game or last year when he had a thousand yards in his first two seasons and double digit touchdowns. Like he's the guy was a good player and they just came the in and changed, changed things up. Scheme now changed. obviously landing spot. Could, we're not going to do any rankings or anything like that anytime soon. And landing spot could do a lot of things for your or draft capital for any of your players but like you know this is a guy who i know his body everything is it translates right his style it translates right into the nfl i don't have right. to play the guessing game of oh well can this guy play in the league fuck yeah he can play in the league mm -hmm. like there's no, <laughs> there's no doubt about it <laughs> like instead people are going to take other guys who are higher and who have this great one trait sexier that's, that's super sexy and this really has these couple of crazy great fun runs 13 foot broad drop right and and crazy athleticism but but we don't know if they can actually play like right. i know benny snell can play at the next level i don't have to question that like that's why i don't need the combine for benny snell to really tell me i know this guy can play right like Sure, he could go to a, a bad landing spot and not be in a position to be a workhorse for a team. He kind of needs to be the workhorse to be the guy, um, so or, or to be effective as a fantasy player. Like I don't, he's not a Justice Hill like we'll talk about in a little bit, where you know you, he could have a, a role where he only gets twelve handoffs a game or eight handoffs a game, but gets a couple of balls thrown his way and can have a splash play or two to to be worthy of being in your lineup. Um, but he could be a guy who could be your franchise running back that you can give it to 20 times a game. Now, albeit there aren't a million of those guys, you know, the NFL isn't big on that. There's not too many guys who are just the guy at this point, but there is a decent amount of guys who will get 15 to 18 carries a game and have a guy fill in there. And, and you know, you you mentioned it like he if he went to the Jets, would it be? Yes, it'd be great for the song that we've for been using. Sure. But I mean, you, you could get a well, Adam Gase is there, so I don't like that, but. Yeah. You know, if you're good, he's probably not going to play you. Right. <laughs> but you, you could get into a situation where you could be the every down kind of guy. And there's we've stated multiple reasons why he doesn't have to come off the field. And Right. Well, speaking of that, one last thing I have for Benny Snell is in the injury department. All I could find was a bruised ankle, a injured rib, and he played through all of that. And he never came off the field, and so and he didn't even get that dinged up. So for him to be that big and play that physical, thirty nine handle games. that many carries, and to to not barely fourth have in it, attempts in in the nation this to year. not have a damn injury to really even speak of, I think speaks volumes for Benny Snell. Right. So I'm I'll put the flag and the stamp on Benny Snell. I'm in on Benny Snell. I don't know where he'll end up in my rankings because I'm not going to be there for a while. But this is a guy again that I want to target because he'll be on the back end of things and I'll be able to move picks around and put Benny Snell on my team. Um, and landing spot could change a ton, obviously, and that's important. But for me, he's a, he's a big target of, of a guy that I don't think I need to worry about going to making the jump from one level to the next. The best part about it is right now, he's 18th overall rookie rankings in DLF, which would put him at 2-6 in the rookie draft. Obviously, he'll probably go up, but... Maybe not, and right now, 2-6, rookie ADP. There's no chance he makes it to 2-6 in a draft that any of us are in. Like I said, there's, 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 I, I'm not through all the process of all these guys, but there is, doesn't seem to be a ton of big workhorsey kind of guys. It seems like a little bit of a smaller 
class of guys who are more in the 200 range rather than right. closer to the 220 range. Right, you um, got a few, and can be the guy on every single down. You got the Alabama guys are are decently big. The Rodney Anderson is pretty big. Um, coming in with a bunch of injury concerns though, and you got David Montgomery. But after that, you're right. It's, I know it's there's a a, there's of, a list of other guys who are kind of secondary players currently, secondary uh, players on DLF like that. I don't haven't looked at like I, right. I, don't, I don't know how big i know well, just click like lj and- lj scott's pretty big but i don't think he's gonna be you know high up there i mean uh the guy from uh kansas state i think he's kind of big is, is michigan is higdon is he kind of big higdon well hitting the running backs he's 202 tab he's uh benny snell's at number nine so there's eight running backs in front of him right now um, Miles Sanders is two two fifteen. Rodney Anderson's two twenty. A- Alex Barnes from Kansas State, he's two twenty five. The guy so from Slippery Rock, I think, is kind of big. Slippery Rock, Slippery West Rock, Hills, he's maybe shooting straight up my rankings just because I, he went to Slippery Rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but well, anyway. I think I think that'll cover it for uh, Benny Snell. Yeah, nice little first peek of Benny Snell and. Of our you know where we backs. stand. Yeah, give me, give me the, give me all the Snell, Snell, yeah, Snell, you later. Boy can play football. That's all he can play. Definitely. There's only so many things that need to be measured when I know that you can play football. Then I know you can play football. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, Snell, you later.